Dear colleague, friends, brothers and sisters, uh, whenever you are, wherever you are, I greet you with the greeting of peace, safety, tranquility. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today is a very memorable day for the Muslim because it's the day where the people are making uh, the pilgrims st standing on the mountain of Arafah, uh, asking Allah for forgiveness. Today, if the people who are not making Hajj are fasting, like us in UK or in Egypt or in any other part of the world, Allah will forgive our sins for one year that's past and one year to come. So I encourage everybody to do that. Today also is a day of forgiveness and the saddest day of the devil or for the devil. Because Allah will forgive everybody who stand at home or anywhere and ask him to forgive him or her. That means that all the sins being guided or forced on us by the devil will be cleared. So I wish you today that Allah will forgive all our sins, my sins and your sins. And today also the day that we need to do a lot of good work, keep carrying on, not only today, but every day. And this is one of the, this is the best day of the year. This is number one. Number two is uh, I'm changing my policy or my strategy of doing my Zoom meeting, stopping the live Zoom because of the intruder or the hackers who every now and then come and disturb the talks. That's why I'm going to record my talk and then put them on the YouTube and from the YouTube, I will send it to you, inshallah. Uh, before we start, we need to thank our colleague uh, Aya for preparing the slideshow. And I will explain my drawing to you of this. Uh, he's not a gentleman. This, uh, whatever you call his name, you can describe him the way you want later on in the slide show. Uh, all right. I have written a post on 9 7 2016, five years ago. And in this post, I was saying, talking about the causes of extremism, radicalism, and terrorism. And I made them 20 causes for extremism, radicalism, and terrorism. And as you can see them, and today I will discuss them at a later stage of my talk with you. I have revisited or reviewed my post and restructured it and make it four parts. Part one about definition. Part two about the reasons or the causes, the 20 causes of extremism, radicalism, isolationism. Part three about solution, part four is my message to the young people. Part one, isolationism. Isolation, solitude, and seclusion mean the state of one who is alone. The state of one who is alone. Solitude may imply a condition of being apart from all human beings or of being out of by wish, by your own wish or circumstances from one usual associates. And you take yourself away of the public scene or the public atmosphere. Isolation stresses detachment from others often voluntarily. Yeah, I'm, I don't want to see anybody. Seclusion suggests a shutting away or keeping apart from others, often connoting deliberate withdrawal from the world or retirement to be 
to a quiet life. These are the dictionary definitions of isolationism, seclusion, isolation, solitude, seclusion for us. Uh, this could be due to many causes or many things. One is bad experience, bad personal relationship with others. You quarrel with somebody, she quarrels with somebody, you swear at them, they swear at you, so you take a side. Or loss of dear member of the family, My, your wife, your daughter, your sister, your friend, your colleague, your fiance, your father, your mother, all this. Or because of infectious disease or contagious disease, like nowadays with, with, with COVID, everybody shutting himself inside his or her houses and being scared of communicating and connecting with others. Number four, because and five, because psychiatric disturbances or organic neurological disorders, some psychiatric or neurological disorders. Number uh, six or seven, it is the working atmosphere. There's a lot of pressure on you. So once you go out, you don't want to see anybody, talk to anybody, be with anybody, and you cut yourself off the social arena. Last and not least, the political atmosphere itself might be very dictatorship-like. Uh, clamping down, reducing the civil liberty of everyone. That's why people shut themselves up in their homes, don't want to come out publicly. These are some of the reasons of isolationism and others. Extremism, other definition for extremism could be political, religious idea, could be it's the political ideas, religious ideas or actions could be considered by others because it is it's not normal, it's not reasonable, it's not acceptable. So people will call it really extremism. And your talk, your idea, your philosophy of thinking, your religious idea, your political idea, your action, people say that's not reasonable, it's not acceptable, so this extreme. Uh, could be vocal also or active opposition to fundamental values. Whether, what are the fundamental values? People, British, British values, American values, Swiss values, Saudi values, Egyptian values, Pakistani values, what are those values? Then you can tell us how we can become extreme if we oppose such values. Radicalization is defined as the process by which people come to support terrorism. Okay? And the extremism. In some cases, to then participate in terrorist groups, in terrorist groups. And first, they support, second, they participate. It could be an expression used by others to describe action. They look at it, this, it it's an extremism, or an act of extremist. Used to stigmatize people, to stigmatize political ideology, which is far from the political orientation of the society. Stigmatize the violent attempts to make the make political and social change. So it's a description of people to what you do as well. It's a process of rating person, rating the person or a group or an action as extremism or extremists. Most probably to make political gains, pass certain laws or even declare war. This will be seen by the government or the other political group. It is the exaggeration in the belief and some support of political, religious, ideological dogma. Yani you support this group in, in, in a way that actually people will say that in your support and your love, you are extreme. Or there could be political, religious, ideological 
could be dangerous. It could be a destructive method for the individual and the groups. This kind of the un the un uh, 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 measured love and support to someone or some people, some group will be called extremism or extremism. He could become extremist in his love to his uh, uh, fiance or in his love to his political group and support his political group. On a group. What are the reasons of extremism? About seven reasons. First of all, biological. When you treat your children very badly at home, in the family, whether this is done by the mother, the father, or the elder brothers and sisters, or the uncles or the aunties, it could be psychological due to exposure to psychiatric disturbances or personality disorders. could be social. When we grow up, in a very low social class, uh, guided by ignorance, guided by ignorance, and infested by backwardness. And this will be affecting the family bonds and the family ties inside the family, and some of the members of the family will be to going to the extreme side. This is the social. Cultural. When the culture opposes your freedom, your personal freedom and desire to learn, to develop in the open and to, and, and to communicate with the open and outside world, could be religious. When the religious people in the mosque or synagogue in the temple telling you about morality and when you go outside, you'll be shocked to see how the community is treating you. It's treating you. And this will let the individual to be in a dilemma between what he, what he or she hears inside the church or the mosque or the synagogue or the temple or how the people are dealing with it outside. Could be political, economical, or social problems, which actually uh, letting uh, the citizens of the country to become extremist because of the bad management and the corruption of the government. Could be due to tyranny internally by dictatorship, uh, dictatorship regime in most of the third world countries or externally by the developed countries who imposes certain measures to clamp down the freedom of your uh, society in your country or to steal your resources, as is happening in Africa and other parts of the world nowadays. The third definition is terrorism. Unfortunately, there is no unified universal definition for it. No. The United Nations between 1970 and 1980 and it tried its best through the member state to find a unified, global, comprehensive definition, but they failed. You know, they failed what? They failed because to using the violence in conflicts, our freedom and self-determination. And when some other foreign power or groups come and they attack my country and I defend my country, will you call me terrorist or not? That's why something like this. When I want to liberate my country, will you call me a warrior, national warrior, or you call me extremist or a terrorist? That's why they couldn't be able to find a comprehensive, unified, universal definition. But on the contrary, more than 180 state member states of the United Nations signed to fight terrorism without knowing what the definition of terrorism is. Terrorism has no clear unified global objectives that can be tackled by law. The definition of the international law is of terrorism is these violent actions leading to the creation of atmospheric fear. And uh, certain groups have violent action leading to creation of atmosphere of, peer, of, 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 of fear to the rest of the member of the society. It's usually targeting the followers of uh, certain religious, political, and biological groups, as well as innocent civilian citizens. Such tactics are used by the criminal groups 
to defend their laws and order. These are the definitions. The definitions of terrorism, the definition of extremism, the definition of a isolationism. Point number two in my talk is, point number two in my talk is, uh, when we talk about uh, the 20 causes of isolationism, extremism, and terrorism. That's what I wrote uh, five years ago without actually explaining it. Number one of these 20 reasons is the suppression and the, reduce, the reduction of the civil liberty spaces and confiscation of the intellectual rights of the individuals, of the intellectual rights of the individual. This is very important. You cannot write a novel that you like. You cannot write an, a piece or in, in the journal that you like or make a program on the television or on the Facebook or in the social media because of this kind of no lack or weak or absence of the uh, civil liberty space and the confiscation of your intellectual rights. Point two, the, the reason number two is disabling the civil society sector. How? By putting very rigid laws to control it, by closing down many organizations and by restricting the movement of the civil or the activities of the civil uh, society organization. Number three, uh, the, 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 the issue or the philosophy of dependency and impartiality of the state. And partiality, not impartiality. Dependency and partiality. Sorry, it's the, the, the word is wrong. Not impartiality, it's partiality. When you find that the state and institution which should be independent from the government are partial or biased to the government, to the one man in the country, to the one president in the country, to the one king in the country, to the one queen in the country, to the one prince in the country and others. This will create uh, causes, it will be one of the causes of isolationism, extremism and terrorism. Number four, the rising level of ignorance. The certain governments intentionally do not invest in education. And as I mentioned before many times, some of them even do not spend two or three percent of the budget on education. The rising level of ignorance, poverty, poverty as well because of the corruption. Deprivation and diseases because of no investment in the social service departments like education, like water, like sanitation, like health and others. So third and fourth are very important, the dependency and partiality of the state institutions such as the military, the security, the media, the religious, the legislative, the judiciary, all those will be in the hand of one individual only. And this is fatal, fatal for any nation, for any state, for any government. Number five is prevention of growth of what? Political, social, and economical, and intellectual pluralism. Nowadays, we see governments and countries have got the one social institution, the one political institution, the one religious institution, the one think tank institution, and no pluralism, no multiplicity, unfortunately. Number six, minority persecution. Always the minority could be suspected by the dictatorship government. And uh, minorities persecution, mistrust, and marginalization. Number seven, indefinite use of martial law. There are certain countries, maybe for the last 50 or 60 or 70 years, are using martial law, renewed every three to six months. There's no agreement, that's number eight, no agreement on the definition of extremism, radicalism, terrorism, and others. 
That's why the security can get you, the media can get you, the politicians can get you, and so on. Absence or dysfunctioning parliamentary system. We might have a parliament, which is like uh, a, a clown show, lying or chosen by the hand of the one individual. Like we see it clearly in so-called countries in the East that they give democracy for people to have an election, to choose the member of the parliament, then they become like a clown inside the parliament. And if any one of them will say something not being uh, accepted by his holiness or his lordship, uh, the president or the king, he or she will be put in jail. Ignoring the role of youth, the youth in, in the East consider about 60%, more or less. We sideline them, we don't use them. That's why those youth, young people, become disenfranchised and could become uh, radical or extremist or uh, unfortunately later on. Government extravagant spending, yani in very unnecessary luxury meetings, conferences, uh, uh, activities and prizes, carnivals and others, and even to try to fool the citizens, they uh, invite thousands and thousands of people to yell and hail for them during their uh, speeches they deliver and they pay for them find them standing uh, uh, reciting poetry standing uh, clapping or dancing or yelling towards the one and the only one uh, uh, i can't uh, ex explain it in english the miraculous, the miraculous baby who run the country. Widespread corruption. If 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 the if, if you reduce the civil liberty space, if you make all your state institution biased towards the one individual, and if you have this clown show inside the parliament, of course there'll be a corruption in the country. This is actually one of the 20 causes of extremism, radicalism, isolationism. Government reliance on what? Sometimes the government now, like what we have seen during 2011, 2012, that certain governments released the criminals, the recorded criminals, the thugs, the ringleaders, and led them to go and infiltrate the uprise, the peaceful, civilian uprise against the regime and led them to shut up the oppos political opposition po uh, people. It's number 13. Number 14 could be religious phobia. Nowadays, nowadays we have something called rel religious, religious phobia. If anyone talk about religion, the other people will be scared of him or her. Needless to say, suspicion and being afraid of any religious individuals and tarnishing them, whether they are male or female, whether they grow their beard or not, whether they wear hijab. Like nowadays, you can see the European Parliament passes this uh, decision of not allowing uh, hijab or veil. Restriction of civil liberty and uh, shrinking down of civil liberty spaces in Europe. Only on one group of people, one race, or not one race, one religion. Excessive use on the military of security and military measures as a solution. If something wrong happened somewhere, use the, the military. Why? Use uh, uh, security. Why? There's a lot of civil society organizations, a lot of traditional leadership 
in the in the, in the society, like tribe of leaders, like head of families, they can sit down and sort out this problem when it's small. But once you put the security and the military, you expand the problem and you create hatred and extremism, uh, accelerationism, uh, radicalism, and terrorism. The rise of unemployment, of course, government who does not respect the individual citizen don't care about employment. You don't want them to earn any money. Imposing strange foreign moral values does not have the, anything to do with the culture, with the local values, with the history, with the religion. That's why I find people saying, look at the drama during Ramadan. Look at the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the scenario of the discussion between the actors and actresses. They used very low standard of communication and wording, which considered rude, low, vulgar. Even any decent, poor, low social class, which I respect all of them, because I'm one of them, will never, ever, even any ring leader or thug will never use this. But those kind of actors and actresses and the scenarists the script writers will let this to come home during the month of the holy month of Ramadan or any other uh, month. Negligence of the border state. Yani, when it comes to the border, there's no much expenditure. They spend all their money in the capital. Not only the less of expenditure investment. Or in development and developing the 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 the, the border uh, governorates, but suspecting the citizens living there. Lack of government transparency and the absence of accountability system. Of course, this is something we have no doubt about it. Last and not least, spreading the myth, rumors. And, come and creating conflicts among the different social components of society. And this is done by the media. I remember in the 50s, when I was a young uh, child, a certain uh, month of the year used to say that the Holy Virgin Mary السلام, came and find people in a place in Cairo called Chubra. Uh, staying for nights, for days and nights, to see the arrival of Lady Mary, السلام. And this was, as we understood, when the creation of the intelligence to distract people. So any myth, any myth or rumors to distract the people, and then actually to create a conflict between different components of the society of the country. This is the gentleman. No, no, he's not a gentleman. I'm sorry. This is the individual, the fat belly, the fat belly, who has, has who does not care about any individual of the society or of the country. As you can see, this young woman who has children wearing this patchy clothes, clothing, coming with the children, begging him, in his very extravagant, attractive. Top fashion, clothes, smoking Havana cigar, which could cost $50 or more, while those citizens of the country do not have one or two dollars support from the government. And this is the bad individual who is behind all this. Could be a minister, could be a director, could be a prime minister, could be head of political party, could be a religious leader, could be a president, could be a king, could be queen, could be prince, could be whatever it is. And you can see the status of his own people and his own status. With the top, flashy, I call him fat belly, fat belly boy. Uh, third part of my talk is what is the solution? I've been talking about uh, uh, 
for the last half an hour about uh, problems, 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 problems. Okay, خلاص. get us out of this problem. Okay, number one, just eight points, eight points, eight points. Number one, we have by hook or crook to create a civil, uh, sorry, a sufficient civil liberty space to each individual civil citizen inside the family for the children, inside the school and the university for the students, inside the society for every citizen, and inside the work or actually the work for every employees. So to allow them to express their views without being afraid of punishment or afraid of somebody to shut them up. Okay, this number one. Number two, we have to invest in all different kinds of education. As I said in many, 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 many talks, many, many, many times that education is not one size fits all. The some talented children cannot يعني, accept and they don't like most of the subject in the syllabus. So you have to make different education to suit different kind of people. So our education and syllabus should be based, should be research based on the needs of the, uh, the, the, the students, the needs of the local community, the needs of the country, and the need globally. And should be investing not only on the traditional state education, but in vocational training, in uh, what do you call it? Uh, not not vocational uh, talent training. Ta what do you mean by talent training? We find after the primary school at the age of eleven or twelve or thirteen that this young kid could be a very, very, very good athlete. Like if we look at somebody like Muhammad Ali, he started to do, play the boxing at the age of 12. Then he became Muhammad Ali the Great, as we all know him. Okay. He might or she might be having the talent of writing poetry or acting or be, love uh, geometry or love mathematics or physics, or algebra, or astronomy, or uh, what do you call it? other other subjects, water, or uh, uh, natural, uh, like animals, uh, botany, and, and, and all these sort of things. We can direct those talented people to this kind of selected education for talented people. This is what I mean. Uh, number three, uh, building a stronger civil society sector and organization. Because in each country, I've got three or four partners to build and to protect and to save the state and the nation. The government is one, private sector is two, civil society sector and organization is three, and in my understanding, I added the think tank and the research institution, especially in the East, because it's not existing, unfortunately, supported, unfortunately, in the inside the civil society uh, sector. That's why I distinctively took it to make it another uh, component. The most important of these three or four is the civil society organization, because they play the role of the watchdog to prevent the bad relation happening between the government, government officers, and the private business. This is third point. Third point, raising social public awareness. How? It's not by education only. Education is the one part of it. But it has another eight points to talk about. Number one, public libraries building them, investing them, and spreading the philosophy of public libraries, free public libraries, uh, reading for all, 
reading for all. Number two, increasing the social, cultural, literary, and political activities. Let people to come out in the social domain to organize their own activities without letting them be afraid of the security. Number three, organizing school and university trips to where? To historical places. Like if you are in a country like Saudi Arabia, you not a lot of cities, or in Yemen, a lot of cities in Yemen and Saudi Arabia is, is, is underneath the sand. Okay, because Ta'ad, Wasamud, and others were there. But in the state of, in, the, in, in a country like Egypt, you find actually in Aswan, Luxor, and other places, plenty of history, actually. So to connect the young student to his or her past, and then to be very proud of the civilization that his fathers or his uh, uh, and mothers and ancestors created it. Uh, number four, uh, organizing scientific, cultural, knowledge-based sports competitions. Let the energy of the young people to be consumed positively, to become positive energy, not to be changing into a negative energy. Number five, encouraging innovation, pioneering, and recognizing the contribution of such young people. And if I have the talented individual, like I mentioned earlier, who can invent something, I recognize them, then I sponsor them, then I develop them, so on. So, like this, what happened with one of the top scientists in Egypt in the 1920s, he was the second on the country. His name, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about him next uh, week, inshallah, Dr. Ali Mustafa Sharifa. And uh, the ministry itself, when he became the second in the top of, on, on the national level in this secondary school, they sent him scholarship to, to UK, to England, to, no, not to England, to Britain to Nottingham University. He uh, finished his degree in three years instead of four years. The dean of the college and the chairman of the, uh, of the university wrote to the, to the ministry asking them, you know what? To let this man to have his PhD in UK. So the ministry, so the dean of the college and the chairman or the chancellor of the university, so not chairman, wrote to the ministry in Egypt in 1923, asking them to let this man to f go on and finish his PhD. Then he went, they, they, they gave him a scholarship. Then he went in 1923 at a, in, uh, for three years to finish his PhD in King's College. They then had another PhD in the University of London, actually, which one was, yeah, and then he became after that. Uh, he went back to Egypt. But both of them, there was a will, there was a political will in the ministry in Egypt at the time, 1920, and this discovery by the professors or the dean of the uh, uh, college in Nottingham University in 1923. Uh, okay. Establishing uh, what we call uh, school parliament and university parliament. It will tell me what is the difference between school parliament and university parliament and the student union. The big difference, student union is about activities only. And could be only a handful of people will be trained to become leaders. But when you say school parliament or university parliament, this will create the debates between the students inside the schools and inside the universities. Not only the executive members of the student union, but all the students in the school or in the university. Supporting the local and national scouting, scouting movement, having incredible activity globally, 
and they are one of the people in the one of the organization one of the or instrumental in creating this kind of uh, independent uh, strong leadership from early stages the age of eight or nine i was one of them when i was in Helmiya at the age of uh, eight or nine uh, i used to go to the camps in Helwan and in other places as well Encouraging young people's social initiatives. Yes, I have to encourage them and sponsor it for them. Number eight, encouraging. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And others, many, many others. This is this number five. This number uh, four. Number five, encouraging the young people to build their family. Nowadays, there's a new fashion saying uh, sex before marriage is something lawful. If you come to Europe and America, you see how much the young girls suffer from having one or two or three babies by her relationship with others or having this, uh, what do you call it, uh, sexual disease transmitted to her or to him because of this actually sexual promiscuity. You will change your mind it's not on a religious basis, it's on social basis. And you know who suffer most in this kind of uh, loose relationship? It is the girl who is left with the children to look after. The boy run away. But how we tell, we have to tell them how to build their families, to know the rights and duties of each member of the family, and the responsibility in maintaining these families. Number uh, number uh, five or six, guaranteeing the independence of the state institution, as I mentioned earlier, such as military, security, media, legislative, parliamentary, judiciary, and religious, from the executive governments. What is this mentioned before? Making the balance of expenditure between the different so, social service departments, not only spending 70 or 80 or 90 percent on military and security, and the rest on the other social service departments. No, this is this is fatal, and this was happening unfortunately under the banner of uh, war and terror or fighting terrorism. When I say that, this does not mean a confrontational relationship between the with the government, but creating conducive relationship between the state and institutions and the governments. It's a relationship of guidance from the state institution, monitored, monitoring by state institution, and changing the homeland course of action by state institution, as it's happening here in the West. Creating new, simple, and easy jobs for those people who are not university graduates particularly investing in building local community markets in different municipalities, as well as investing in agriculture, livestock, fisheries, and local community transportation. These are the eight points I bought as a solution. And more, but we are always, yani, I am telling you about myself, are always optimistic because we believe that the social diseases are treated by the civil society organization in partnership with whom? With government, number one, state institution, number two, private businesses and sector, number three, economical institution, number four, research institution, and think tank. Those all collectively and media uh, uh, and think tank. It's like the medical doctors who are treating illnesses of their patients. Sometimes they make consultation with other colleagues. The civil society organization will treat these illnesses as well. So civil society organization, as I mentioned, are considered to be like the doctors who are treating their patients. Let's be wise when we treat this phenomena through building a stronger and effective partnership with others. As I mentioned before, the capacity of our society is more than sufficient for all of us. But terrorism has no sufficient capacity for the individual. If we disagree with him or her, 
we act to terminate their life. My message to the young people, let us realize that isolationism, extremism, and radicalism, and terrorism are, are and were social manifestations found in society since the creation of man. It's nothing new. Don't come and tell me it's nothing new. It's not a special manifestation for one group and not for the others. One religion, one race, one clan, one sect, and not for the others. It's affecting all and could happen to all. But my statement to you, young people, never ever let anyone to stigmatize you and let you be ashamed of something you don't have. Never let them to do that to you. Young people, remember that life is about pushing and tugging, failures and achievement. And what's happened for, for us every now and then has already happened to many people before, many, many people before. Those who managed to get up from their slumber and failure and build scientific knowledge have created renaissance and established civilization, like the German and the Japanese after the Second World War. Defeat, there's defeat in the Second World War. But those who failed to recover and surrender to the spirit of defeat put their nation at the tail end of other nations. Please, please don't lose hope and start to rebuild your homeland again. It's not faultness, humiliation, shame that the one of us fails or become sick, or lose his or her wealth, children, wife, prestige, and power. Look at these two examples. Prophet Yusuf was a, a son of a prophet, and he has got 11 brothers, and they were very jealous because of the relationship and the love between him and his father, Yaqub They throw him in the deep well as the young kid. Then he was sold as a slave. Then he was picked up by the caravan and sold as a slave. Then he had been brought up into the house of this Egyptian leader. Then he was, as the wife of this man, tried to seduce him, put him under pressure, and he refused. Then he was thrown into jail unjustly for years. But after all this journey, which could have been 20 years or more, what happened? He became the chancellor of Exchequer of the strongest economy on earth, Egypt at that time. Prophet Ayub has got, I think, his leprosy and he lost everything all his children, wealth, health, everything for nearly 20 years. But he was patient till Allah cured him again and gave him more children, more wealth, more strength, more health again. This example on the status of prophethood. Let's believe there's no disabled person amongst us. The disabled people are those who disable themselves. Don't ever disable yourself. Who believe that they are disabled and giving in to the claims of others who call, they, who call them that they are disabled. Let me talk about another example. His name is Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was sacked from his school because the teacher thought that he is extremely stupid and sent this note, this piece of note to his mother. Okay. But when the mother looked at it, she changed the negative energy into positive energy and told him, my son, I am going to have homeschooling for you. I said, why, mom? I said, because the teacher said that you are super intelligent and outstanding character, and you cannot be among those people who are less intelligent than yourself. What happened later on by a good mother, like the mother of Thomas Edison, to her son? Later on, 
He invented the electric light device, the electric phonographic device, the electrical photographic device, and the electric generation, and others. One day he was thrown out from the school, but the mother changed this negative message into a positive message. Even Beethoven, and every one of us knows who is Beethoven, one of the top most important musician in the history of mankind. At his last days of his life, or years of his life, he became deaf. But this deaf, being deaf, did not stop him from writing one of the most, most famous musical pieces. Being deaf did not stop him from writing his notes or his music. Let us young people point out our, our, our finger to whom? To those people, you know, let me bring you to, to the image again. To those people. See? He looks smart. He's not smart. He is. Let us point our fingers uh, to those real sick. He is real sick. And nasty individuals who are spreading these social illnesses and are accusing others of isolationism, radicalism, extremism, and terrorism. Those are the stupid, petty, lying idiots who sell their homelands, history, culture, and values for a quick gain. Please don't listen to their lies, slanders, or slurs. Please be confident in yourselves your culture, your values. Please make patience, belief, scientific knowledge, and feel the experience to be the cornerstone of your renaissance, sorry, the cornerstone of your resistance. To what? To these social illnesses manifestation. Let me say this again. Don't listen to the lies, slanders, and slurs. Be confident in yourselves, your culture, and values, please make patience, patience, number one, belief, number two, scientific knowledge, number three, and the experience, field experience, number four, to be what? To be the cornerstone of your resistance to these social illnesses manifestation. Let us, last but not least, young people, let us work together to achieve one common and the clear objective, just one objective. Could be on a personal level for you, could be on a social level for society, could be on a national level for our country, or could be for an international level for humanity. And let us as well invite others, colleagues and friends, to share this with us, to achieve this objective for you, for the society, for the nation, or for humanity. My last message to all of you is, let us know young people, that there's a treatment for every illness. There's a rise for every stumble. There's a waking for every inattention. There's a wake up for every sleep. There's a win for every loss. There's a knowledge for every ignorance. There's a belief for every disbelief. There's a forgiveness for every sin. There's an increase for every decrease, and there's a guidance for every deviation. And there, and for every path and edge, there is a beginning and end. You want me to say it again? It's a treatment for every illness, a rise for every stumble, awakening, awakening for every inattention, a wake up for every sleep, a win for every loss, a knowledge for every ignorance, a belief for every disbelief, a forgiveness for every sin, an increase for every decrease, guidance for every deviation, and for every path and edge, there is a beginning and an end. Jazakumullah khair. God bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.